Today we're going to be having a look at multilingual sentence transformers. We're going to look at how they work, how they're trained, and why they're so useful. We're going to be focusing on one specific training method, which I think is quite useful because all it really needs is a reasonably small data set of parallel data, which is simply translation pairs from a source language like English to whichever other language you're using. So obviously if you are wanting to train a sentence transformer in a language that doesn't really have that much data, it's particularly sentence similarity data, this can be really useful for actually taking a, a high performing, for example, English sentence transformer and transferring that knowledge or distilling that knowledge into a sentence transformer for your own language. So I think I think this will be will be pretty useful for a lot of you. And let's jump straight into it. Before we really get into the, the whole multilingual sentence transformer part of the video, I just want to sort of give an impression of, of what these multilingual sentence transformers are actually doing. So on here we can see a, or we can see a single single English sentence or, or brief phrase down at the bottom, Isle of Plants, and the rest of these are all in Italian. So what we have here are vector representations or dense vector representations of these phrases. And a monolingual sentence transformer, which is most of the sentence transformers, uh, will only cope with one language. So we would hope that phrases that have a similar meaning end up within the same sort of vector space. So like we have for amo lupiante here and I love plants, these are kind of in the same space. A monolingual sentence transformer uh, would do that for similar sentences. So in English, we might have I love plants and I like plants, which is actually what we have up here. So this here is the Italian for I like plants. And we would hope that they're in a similar area, whereas uh, irrelevant or, or almost contradictory sentences, we would hope would be you know, far off somewhere else, like our, our vector over here. So that's how obviously a monolingual sentence transformer works. And it's exactly the same for a multilingual sentence transformer. The only difference is that rather than having a, a single language, it will comprehend multiple languages. And, and that's what you can see uh, in, in, this, in this visual. So in this example, I have I love plants and amo le piante. They have the same meaning, just in different languages. So that means that they should be as close together as possible in this vector space, okay? So here we're just visualizing three dimensions. In reality, it would be a lot more. I think most transforming models go with 768 dimensions. But obviously, we can't visualize that, so we have 3D here. So we want different languages or similar sentences from different languages to end up in the same area. And we also want to be able to represent relationships between different sentences uh, that are, are similar. And we can kind of see that relationship here. So we have mi piacciono le piante and amo le piante and I love plants are all kind of in the same sort of area. Mi piacciono le piante, so I like plants, is obviously separated somewhat, but it's still within the same area. And then in the bottom left down there, we have o un cane arancione, which means I have a orange dog. So obviously, you know, that's really nothing to do with I love plants. Uh, although I suppose you could say it's, you're talking about yourself, so maybe it's a little bit similar, but otherwise uh, the completely different topics. So, that's kind of what we want to build. Something that takes sentences from different languages and maps them into a vector space 
which has some sort of numerical structure to represent the semantic meaning of those sentences. And it should be language agnostic. So obviously we can't, well, maybe we can train on every language. I don't know any models that are trained in every single language, but we want it to be able to comprehend different languages and not be biased towards different phrases in different languages, but just have a very balanced comprehension of all of them. Okay. So that's how the vectors should look. Uh, and then, and then, okay. So how, what would a training data for this look like? And what are the, are the training approaches? So like I said before, there's, there's two training approaches that I'm going to just briefly touch upon, but we're going to focus on the, on the latter of those. So the first one that I, I want to mention uh, is, is what the M-U-S-E, MUSE or Multilingual Universal Sentence Encoder Model was trained on, which is, is a multitask translation bridging approach to training. So uh, what I mean by that is it uses, it uses two or it uses a dual encoder structure and those encoders deal with two different tasks. So on one end, you have the parallel data training. So when we say parallel data, these are sentence pairs in different languages. So like we had before, we had the, the Amale Piante and Isle of Plants, which is just the, the Italian and English phrases for Isle of Plants. So we would have our source language and also the translation or the target language. It's probably a better way, but I'll put translation now. So we have the source and translation. That's our parallel data set. And uh, what we're doing is optimizing to get those two vectors or the two sentence vectors produced by either one of those sentences as close as possible. Okay. And then there is also the source data so we have uh, we, we basically have like sentence similarity or, or nli data but we have it just for the, the source language so we have you know, source sentence a and, and source sentence b and we train on both of these now this is you know it works and that's good uh, but obviously we're, we're training on a multi multi-task architecture here and and you know, training on a single task in, in machine learning is, is already hard enough. Training on, on two and getting them to balance uh, and train well is, is, is harder. And the amount of data, at, le at least from use, and I believe for, you know, if you're training using this approach, you're going to need to use a similar amount of data, is pretty significant. I think Muse is something like a billion pairs, so it, it's pretty high. And... Another thing is that we also need something called hard negatives in the training data uh, in order for this model to perform well. So what I mean by a hard negative is, let's say we have our, you know, we have our source sentence A here, and we have this source B, which is like a, a similar sentence, a high similarity sentence. Can they mean basically the same thing? Uh, we'd also have to add a, a source C. And this source C will have to be similar in, in the words I use to, to source A, but actually means something different. So it's harder for the model to differentiate between them. Again, the model would have to figure out, you know, these two sentences are not similar, even though they, they seem similar at first, but they're, they're not. So it makes the task, the training task harder for the model, uh, which of course makes the model better. So that is training approach number one. And we, we've mentioned the, the parallel data there. That's the, the data set we're going to be using for the second uh, training approach. And, and that second training approach is called multi-lingual knowledge distillation. So that is a mouthful and <laughs> takes me a while to, to write down, sorry. So 
multilingual knowledge distillation. So this was introduced in, in 2020 by you know, who we who we've mentioned before, Sentient Transformers people, Nils Reimers and Irina Gurevich. And the sort of advantage of, of using this approach is that we only need the parallel data set. So we only need those translation pairs and the amount of training data you need is is a lot smaller. And using using this approach, uh, the, the sentence transformers people who have, have actually trained sentence transformers uh, that can be used on more than 50 languages at once. With, and, and the performance is good. It's not just that they you know manage to uh, get a few phrases correct, the, the, the performance is actually quite good. So I think you know it's pretty pretty impressive, and the, you know the training time for these is is super quick, uh, as we'll see. And uh, like I said, it that it's using just translate translation data, parallel data, which is reasonably easy to get for almost every every language. So I think that's pretty useful. Now, well, let's have a look at what that multilingual uh, knowledge distillation training process actually looks like so it is what we have here so uh, same same example as before i've got i like plants this time and mi piace no le piante which is again the same thing in italian now we have both of those we have a teacher model and a student model now when, when we say knowledge distillation uh, that means where you basically take one model and you distill the knowledge from that one model into another model here. The, the model that already knows uh, some of the stuff that we, we want, that we want to distill knowledge from, is called the teacher model. Okay, now the teacher model, in this case, is going to be a monolingual model. So it's, it's probably going to be a sentence transformer that's very good at English tasks only. And what we do is we take the, the student model, which is going to be a, it doesn't have to be a sentence transformer, it's just a, a, a pre-trained transform model. Uh, we'll be using XLM Roberta later on. And it needs to be capable of understanding multiple languages. Okay, so in this case, we, we feed the English sentence into both our teacher model and student model. And then we optimize the student model to reduce the difference between the two vectors output by those two models and that makes the student model almost mimic the monolingual aspect of the teacher model but then we take that a little further and we process the italian or, or the target language through the student model and then we do the same thing so we we try to reduce the difference between the italian vector and the teacher's english vector and what we're doing there is, is making the student model mimic the teacher for a different language Okay, so through that process, you can you can add m more and more languages to a student model, which mimics your your teacher model. Which, uh, yeah, I mean it's it seems at least really simple, just you know to think of it like that. In, in my opinion, anyway, but it works really well. So it's a it's a, a very cool technique in in, in my opinion. I, I do like it. So. Uh, just you know, a more visual way of going through that. Uh, we, we have the these different circles. They represent different language tasks or or different languages, but pretty similar or, or the same task in each one of those. We have our monolingual teacher model, uh, and, and that can perform on one of these languages, but fails on the others. We take that monolingual model or our teacher model, and then we also take a pre-trained multilingual model um, so the important thing here is that it can handle new languages, like I said, with XLM and Roberta. Uh, this is our student. We perform multilingual knowledge distillation, meaning the student learns how the teacher performs well on the single task by mimicking its sentence vector outputs. The student then performs this mimicry across multiple languages, and then hopefully the student model can now perform across all of the languages uh, that we are wanting to train on. That's how how the, the multilingual knowledge distillation works. Let's have a look at that in, in code. 
Okay, so we're in our code here, and the first thing I'm going to do is actually get our data. So, in the in the paper that introduced the multilingual knowledge distillation, uh, Rymers and Gurevich use the focus partly on this TED subtitles data. So, yeah, we we know you know TED talks. They're just low talks where people you know present on on, on a particular topic. Usually, pretty interesting, and those TED Talks have subtitles in, in loads of different languages. So they scraped that subtitle data and use that as sentence pairs for the different languages. Okay, so that's the, the parallel data. Now, what I'm gonna do is use Hug and Face Transformers to, to download that. So we just import data sets here. Uh, so like I said, Hug and Face Transformers actually Hug and Face data sets here. So import data sets and I'm going to load that data set and just have a look at what the structure of that data set is. So it's the Ted Mortai and I'm just getting the training data here. You see in here we have this uh, features, translations and talk name. Now it's not, not really very uh, clear, but inside the translations data, we, we have the language tag. So these are uh, language codes, ISO language codes. If you if you type that into Google, they'll they'll pop up. Uh, if you don't know which one, uh, which are which, and below we also have in here. It's not very clear again. So if I come here, we have translations, and each one of those uh, corresponds to the, the language code up here. Okay, so uh, if we came here, we see EN it's English, and we find it here. Okay. And then we also have talk name. It's not really important for us. So we, we can get the index of our English text because we need to we need to extract that for our source uh, language. So we extract that, we get number four. So we're going into those language pairs, finding EN. Uh, and then we, we use that index to get the corresponding translation, which is here. And then we would use that to create all of our, our pairs. Now, here, I've just created loads of pairs. Uh, this is just the first one, so this is English to Arabic. Um, but if we have a look, there's actually loads of pairs here. So we have 27 in total, which is obviously quite a lot. We're probably not gonna use all of those. Um, I mean, you could do if you want to, it depends on what you're what you're trying to build. Uh, but I think most of us are probably not going to be trying to build some uh, some model that you know crosses all of these different uh, languages. So what I'm gonna do is just initialize a list of languages that we would like to to train on. So we're going to be feeding all of this into uh, into a sentence transformer class called Parallel Sentences Dataset, and, and that that requires that we one separate our our pairs using a, a tab character, and and two keep all of those pairs separated in different uh, gzipped file files. So that's why I'm using this particular structure. So, you know, data preprocessing steps here, I'm just running through them quickly because I want to focus more on the actual uh, sentence transformer training part. So run that and we can, well, it's actually going to take a moment. So let me skip forwards. Okay, and then we want to see how many pairs, I just, well, I just want to see, <laughs> we don't have to do this, but I want to see how many pairs we have for each language. And you see here we have uh, about 200, for each of them, the German one is, is slightly less. Okay, and then let's have a look at what those source and translations look like. So here we have applause and applausy. Now, I think that's Italian, it seems so. Um, but here we, we can see, okay, or the end of the talk ends in applause. So obviously the, the subtitles uh, say applause, or hopefully it ends in applause. And then we just have the tab character and that separates the, the source language, English in this case, from the translated language. Now, okay. Now what we want to do is, is save that data. So we sort all that in, in these dictionaries. Okay, so I initialize dictionary here and access them here. So we have ENIT, ES, AR, FR, and DE. And now I'm just gonna save them. So uh, run this. That will save, and what I'll do is just write OS Lister so we can we can see what is in there. 
uh, where is it? It's data, just data. Is that right? Okay, and then we, we have these these uh, five files. Okay, now let's continue. So now what we want to do is okay. We have that's our training data. It's ready or, or mostly ready before we feed it into uh, the sentence transformers parallel sentences data set object later on. So okay, let's leave that for now and move on to to the next step, which is choosing our, our teacher and student models. So, you know, I already mentioned before, we want our, our student model to be capable of, you know, uh, multilingual comprehension. So what I mean by that, or, or not just what I mean, but one uh, big component of that is, can the transformer tokenizer deal with different languages? Um, in some cases, they, they really can't. So let me let me show you what the, the BERT tokenizer does with these, these four uh, different sentences. So we'll just loop through each one. So four text in sentences. And what I'm gonna do is just print. Uh, I'm gonna print the output of the BERT tokenizer. And if I tokenize that text, you now what what does it what does it give me? Okay. So what we have here, okay, English of course, BERT is fine. Um, BERT the, the tokenizer or the vocabulary of the tokenizer of BERT is I think roughly 30,000 tokens, okay? And most of those are English-based, okay? Some, like you can see here that it has picked up some Chinese characters because it does, you know, other languages do feed into it a little bit because it's just, you know, all the data is pulled from the internet, uh, other bits do get in there, but it's mostly English. So that's why we see, okay, we have these unknown characters. Now, as soon as we have an unknown character in our sentence, uh, the, the tokenizer, or no, sorry, the transformer is really going to struggle to understand, you know, what what, what is in that position? What, what is that unknown token you know, supposed to represent? In the case of, you know, I, I think of it as, it's like, you know, when you're a kid in school and they had those, you know, they had like a paragraph and you had to fill in the, the blanks, right? So you had a paragraph and, and occasionally in a, a couple of sentences, there'll be a couple of blank um, blank lines where you need to you know, guess what the, the correct word should be. If you only have a couple of those blanks, you know, as a as a person, uh, you can you can probably guess accurately. And the same for Bert. Bert can probably guess accurately uh, what the occasional unknown token is. Uh, but if in, in in school they gave you a sheet and they said, okay, fill out these blanks, and it was literally just a paragraph of a blank and you had to guess it correctly, you've probably, I don't know, yeah, I think your chances are, are pretty slim of, of getting that correct. So the same is true for Bert. Bert, for example, in our Georgian example down here, how how can Bert know what that means? It, it will not know. So the tokenizer from Bert is, is not suitable for non-Latin character languages whatsoever. And then it, it does know some, some Greek characters here, and maybe it knows all of them because I suppose Greek feeds into to Latin languages a bit more than than Georgian or, or Chinese. Uh, but it doesn't know what to do with them. They're all single character tokens. And the issue with single character tokens is that you can't really encode that much information into a single character. Uh, because that, you know, if you have 24 characters in your alphabet, you that means you have 24 encodings to represent your entire language, which is not going to happen. So, you know, that's also not good. So basically, don't use a BERT tokenizer. It's not a good idea. What you can do is, okay, how is this XLM or token or tokenizer? Now, XLMR is trained for multilingual uh, comprehension. It uses a sentence piece transformer, which uses byte level logic to split up the, the sentence or, or the words. Uh, so it can it can deal with, with tokens it's never seen before, which is, is pretty nice. And the vocabulary size for this is, is not 30K, it's I think it's 250K. It could be it could be off a few a few K there, but it's around that mark. And it's been trained on many languages. So it's obviously a much 
better option for our student model. So let's have a look at how we, we initialize that. So this XMR uh, model it is just coming from transformers. Okay, so I need to convert that model from a just a transform model into an or initialize it as a sentence transform model using the sentence transformers library. Okay, so from sentence transformers, I'm going to import models and also sentence transformer. Um, so XMR, so this is going to be our, our actual transformer model. We're going to write models dot transformer. Um, sentence transformers under hood uses hugging face transforms as well. So we would access this as the you know normal model identifier that we would with normal hugging face transforms, which is XMR Roberta base. Okay. As well as that, we need a pooling layer. So we write models of pooling. And in here, we need to, to pass the, the output embeddings dimension. So it's this get word embedding dimension uh, for our model. And also what type of pooling we'd like to do. We have max pooling, CLS token pooling. And what we want is, is a mean pooling. So it is pooling mode mean tokens equals true. Okay, so there are the two components of our sentence transformer. Uh, and then from there, we can initialize our, our student. So student equals a sentence transformer. And we're initializing that using the modules, which is just a list of our, of our what, two components there. So XMR followed by boolean. And that's it. So let's have a look at what we, what we have there. Okay, we can just ignore this top bit here. We just want to focus on this. So you see we have our transforming model followed by the pooling here. And we also see that the, we're using the uh, mean tokens pooling set to true, rest of them are false. Okay, so that's our student model initialized. And now what we want to do is initialize our teacher model. Now, the teacher model let me let me show you you just have to be a little bit careful with this so sentence transformer so maybe you'd use you'd like to use it one of the, the top forming ones which is a lot of them are the the old models so these are all mo monolingual models um all mpnet base v2 and Okay, let's initialize this and let's see what is inside it. Okay, so we have the transformer with the pooling as, as we have before, uh, but then we also have this normalization layer. So the outputs from this model are, are normalized. And obviously if you, you're trying to make another model uh, mimic the, that normalization layer outputs, well, it's not ideal because the model is going to be trying to uh, normalize its own vectors so you, you don't you don't really want to do that you want to choose a model you either want to remove the normalization layer or just choose a model uh, that doesn't have a normalization layer which I, I think is probably the, the better option so that's what i'm going to do so for the teacher i'm going to use a sentence transformer i'm going to use paraphrase models because these don't use normalization layers uh, distill Roberta base v2. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so now you see we have the transformer uh, followed directly by the, the pooling. Now, another thing that you probably should just be aware of here is that we have this max sequence length here, it's 512, which doesn't align uh, with our, our paraphrase model here. But that's fine because I'm going to limit the the maximum sequence length anyway to 250. So you know, don't you know, it's not not really an issue. But just you know, look out for that if you, you're training your own models. Like this one's up 384. So none of those align. Um, but yeah, just be aware of that that the sequence length might not 
might not align there. So we've okay. So we have our, our, our we've sort of formatted our training data. We have our two models, uh, the teacher and the student. So now what we can do is prepare that data for loading into our training process or fine tuning process. So, uh, so before we're going to be using the parallel sentences. Uh, so sorry, from sentence transformers import parallel sentences data set. And first thing we need to do here is actually initialize the object. And that requires that we pass the, the two models that we're, that we're training with, because this kind of handles uh, the, the interaction between those two models as well. So obviously we have our, our student model, which is our student. And we have the teacher model, which is our teacher. Alongside this, we want batch size. Uh, I'm going to use 32, but I think actually you can, you can probably use higher batches here, or you probably should use higher batches. I think 64 uh, is, is one that I've seen used a lot in, in these training uh, codes. And you also use uh, use embedding cache equal to true. Okay. So that initializes the the parallel sentences data set object. And now what we want to do is add our data to it. So uh, we need we need our training files. So training files is equal to OS list there that we did before. I think it's in the data uh, file in the in the data directory. Uh, yeah. So that is that's what we want. And what I'll do is just um, for f in those train files, I'm going to load each one of those into the, the data set object. Print f and data dot load data. Uh, I need to make sure I include the path there, followed by the actual file name. Uh, you need to you need to pass your max sentences which is the maximum number of sentences that you're going to take from, from that load data batch. So basically the, the maximum number of sentences we're going to use uh, from each language there. Now I'm just going to set this to 250,000, uh, which is higher than any of the batches we have. Uh, but that's, that's fine. I, I don't think, I mean, if you want to try and balance it out, that's, that's fine. You can, you can do that here. Uh, and then the, other option is, is where we set the maximum uh, length of the sentences that we're going to be processing. So that is max sentence length. And as I said before, look, we the maximum we have here is 256 um, or 512. So let's just trim all of those down to 256. Okay, that will we load our data and now we just need to initialize a, a data loader. So we're just using PyTorch here. So run from torch utils, utils.data, import data loader. Uh, loader is equal to data loader. Pass our data. We want to shuffle that data and uh, we also want to set the batch size, which is same as before, 32. Okay, so model is already, data is ready. Now we initialize our loss function. So from sentence transformers again, dot loss, losses, yeah. Import MSC loss. And then loss is equal to MSC loss. Um, and then here we have model equals model equals a student model. Okay, so we're only, we're only um, optimizing our, our student model, not the teacher model. The teacher model is there to teach our student, not the, not the other way around. Okay, so that's everything we need ready for training. So let's move on to the actual uh, training function. So we can train, um, I'm, I'm gonna train for one epoch, uh, but you can, you can do more. Uh, I think in the actual, so in the, in the 
other codes that I've seen that do this. Uh, they they were training for like five epochs, uh, but you 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 even just training on one epoch, how you actually get a, a pretty good model. So I think you don't need to train on, on too many. Uh, but obviously, you know, if you want, if you want, you know, better performance, I, I would go with the, the five that I've seen in, in the other codes. So we need to pass our train objectors here. Uh, so we have the or the data loader. And then the last function. Now we want to say, okay, how many epochs? Like I said before, I'm going to go with one uh, number of warm up sets. So you know, before you jump straight up to the, the learning rate that you, you well, we select in a moment, do we want to warm up first? Yes, we, we do. I'm going to warm up for 10% of the, the training data, which is just the length of the loader. Uh, multiply by 0 0.1 okay and from there uh, where do you want to to save the model i'm going to try uh, i'm going to save it in exxon mar ted our optimizer parameters so we have a we're going to set a learning rate of uh, 2e to the minus 5 epsilon of 1e to the minus 6 and we're also going to set correct bias equal to false okay they're the optimizer parameters and then we can also save the best model save the best model equal to true and then we run it okay so run that uh, it's going to Take a long time, so I'm gonna I'm actually gonna stop it because I've already already run it. And let's have a look at the actually evaluating that and have a look at the results. Okay, so I just have this notebook where I've evaluated the the, the model. Uh, so I'm using this STS uh, sentence textual similarity benchmark data set, uh, which is, is multilingual. I'm getting the English data and also the Italian, and you can see. Uh, they are similar there. So the zero, so each row in the English data set corresponds to the other language data sets as well. So in here, sentence one in the English means the same thing as sentence uh, zero in the Italian. Okay, same sentence two, also have the same similarity score. Um, so the first thing we do is normalize that, that similarity score. Um, and then we go down a little bit so we reformat data using sentence transformers input example class and uh, through this i've created three different evaluation sets so we have the english to english italian to italian and then english to italian and then we what we do here is we initialize a similarity evaluator for each of these data sets again we're using sentence transformers just makes life a lot easier uh, we initialize those and then we can just pass our model to each one of those evaluators to uh, get its performance so here 81.6 on the english set 74.3 and 71 here now i just trained on one epoch if you you want better performance you can train more epochs and you should be able to get more you know towards 80 percent or, or maybe a little bit higher so you know, pretty, you know, pretty straightforward and, and, you know, incredibly easy. And then here, I'm just, I wanted to compare that to the, the student before we trained it. So I initialized a new student and had a look and you can see the evaluation is pretty low. So for English, you know, 47.5, Italian, actually 50% surprisingly, uh, although it is a, you know, it's already a multilingual model. So it does make sense that you can understand Italian. Uh, and then from English to Italian, it, it really struggles, drops down to, to 23. So that's it for, for this video. Um, I think it's been pretty useful, um, at, at least for me, I can kind of see where, you know, you can build a sentence transformer in a lot of different languages using, using this, which is, I think, really cool and will probably be useful for a lot of people. So I hope you enjoyed the video.
thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again in the next one